Now for a check on the health of the retail investor. First quarter profit of Interactive Brokers missing analyst estimates. Revenue rose in line with forecasts, and the company said that its number of customer accounts rose by 21% to $22 million. So joining us right now is Thomas Petterfee. He's Interactive Brokers founder and chairman. Good morning to you. I think we're all trying to understand and, and maybe use your company as a barometer of the health of the investing community, what's happening, where we really are in all of this. Well, for the, for the first time, uh, uh, Interactive Brokers uh, produced record revenues and record uh, pre-tax earnings. Uh, a, a simple bird's eye view of the of IBKR from an investor's point of view should be that we are currently a company with four billion of revenues and three billion of pre-tax profits on an annualized basis. So. Uh, I, I think this is uh, a very good report card. Uh, our growth rate year on year is extremely strong at well over 50 percent. This rate of growth is mostly due to a rapid rise of interest rates. And as that rise is about to come to an end, it is likely to taper off in 2024. Uh, from the point of view of IBKR customers, what right. makes what matters is that our conservative investment approach enables us to continue to pay half percent under Fed fund rates right. on instantly available cash and lend Thomas, money for margins half percent over Fed funds. Is you but here's the here's I think the bigger question right now, and it's really about retail investors broadly. Are you taking market share from others? Are these people who are coming back into the market that are new customers that weren't there before? How, how well, do you it, sort of it, think it, about it, this community right now? It's both. I, more, more of our new customers are new to the market, and uh, but uh, maybe about thirty percent of them come from other brokers. That's roughly and, the mix. And and, you, and where are they coming from? Well, the new customers are new to the marketplace, and 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 the people that come from other places come from you know the, the likes of Schwab, Ameritrade. Uh, Did you see it? Out, I mean, it's too early to know. I don't know if you can speak about sort of what you're already seeing. You know, there was a lot of concern about Schwab uh, after SVB. Obviously, this this most recent quarter doesn't reflect that piece of it. Did you see? No, uh, any no, kind of that, shift there? That has nothing to do with it. So our our rate of customers coming over from Schwab is roughly it remains the same for years now. So this this new uh, banking crisis has nothing to do with it. What about Robinhood? And that we have we have been getting customers from Robinhood for the past three or four years, regularly. And then the other piece of it, we've had lots of conversations with you about crypto. Where does crypto, you think, live right now in the, in, in the mind of uh, the, the retail investing community? Well, a, a crypto activity on our platform is, is very, very slow. So it, it, it uh, really is. Is that because your platform doesn't, um, doesn't cater specifically to the crypto community in the same way that maybe some of the others do? Or do you think it's just reflective uh, that, that, of something else? That's a good question. So the fact is that we do not uh, custody crypto. We custody our customers' crypto with Paxos. So maybe that is one of the reasons. But I think generally crypto trading is, is, is much reduced from where it used to be a year or two ago. And is that just because of what's happened to the price, though? Frankly, you look back, and I don't know if you have an explanation for it. We're looking at Bitcoin right now, still closing back in on thirty thousand dollars. Well, you know, I, I I really don't have a view on that. You don't have a view on on, on the price of crypto, of no, no, why it? No, no, not at all. I I I you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's. It's it's worth nothing, but uh, you know if, I, I I own some, even though I believe it's worth nothing, because other people believe that it's worth something. So, so you own, you believe it's worth nothing, but you own some because you think other people other people believe it's worth something. Exactly. <laughs> um, is that I, how do you think about that as an investing strategy? Do you, are there other things you own like that? 
Well, you know, I yeah, sure. I mean, uh, you know, the stock market is going up, even though I believe it should be much lower, right? So yes, I I I would not say that people should not own stocks because it's going up, even right. though I think it should be lower. Right? Okay, so let, but let, let's just uh, key in on that for a second because uh, I did want to talk to you about sort of where you think the market should be. You're saying you think the market should be lower in, in much in, lower, in, yes, much I, lower. I, I, so we're talking I about the Dow, the, the S and P, everything. I think the market should be about twenty percent lower. I think that uh, you know earnings by the time the the, the interest rate uh, works its way through the economy, the high interest rate uh, earnings will be about on the S and P's will be about two hundred. And 15 times earnings should be about uh, 3,000. Wow. Okay, so a lot lower. Does that mean that you're, you put a lot of money in cash, personally? Uh, yes, I have, yes. And what and, do you think that's going to so do to your business? If clients, you're right, yeah. what do you think it's going to do to your business for the rest of the year? Well, you know, uh, market fluctuates. Uh, we've been in this business for 40 years, so... You know, it's it's we survive good times and bad times. All right, Thomas, we always appreciate talking to you. Thank you so very, very much for joining us. Thank you.